One of the most engaging tutorials on this channel is Bentic masking title zoom in transition in Premiere Pro. In this video, I'm gonna make the same transition but this time using DaVinci Resolve. So first, let's dive into DaVinci Resolve. Inside the timeline, we have two drone footage moving forward. If I move the time indicator, you can see both video clips have almost similar movements, which is important for creating this kind of zoom in text transition. Firstly, ensure that the time indicator is positioned on the fast video footage. Then navigate to the Fusion tab. Inside the Fusion tab, by default, we have the Media In and Media Out nodes. Now select Media In node and then click on the Text node to connect it between Media In and Media Out nodes. Let's organize all nodes according to their workflow to make it easier to work with them. Next, select the Text node and go to the Inspector tab on the right. In the text box, type India or the name of your desired country. As we are gonna break down the magic of India. By the way, you find links to magic of India and Bantike mask entitled Zoom in Transition in Premiere Pro in the description below. After typing, choose a font from the drop down menu. I prefer fonts like Roboto or Papens. For the font style, you can select the bold, which works well for zoom in transition through the text. Now increase the font size to maximum. Instead, you notice there is a limitation. You can't zoom the text beyond the frame. To resolve this issue, we need to apply a transform node. Ensure the text node is selected, then click on the transform node. This is our selected transform node. To adjust this node, move back to the inspector tab. Increase the size value of this node to zoom in on the text. We are still facing issues with zoom effect. Let's try to fix it again. Click in the graph area to deselect the nodes. Then click on the transform node to set it in the fusion graph or node workflow area. Now hold on the shift key and grab the transform node too. Drag it between transform node on and merge node on to connect them. After that navigate to the inspector tab where you find transform node 2 selected for its settings. Now we need to set a keyframe for the size parameter. To do this first change the time indicator position to the beginning frame. Then decrease its value to adjust the text size according to the movement of the drone footage. And click on this small icon to set the fast keyframe. Next change the time indicator position to the frame where it's best to zoom in the text out of the frame. Increase the size value until the text beyonds the frame. This will be the last keyframe and you find the first keyframe at the beginning point. To better understand the keyframes, enable the spline tab and click on the string to zoom in. Enable transform node 2 to view its keyframes. If you can't see them, simply click on zoom to fit to display them. Now you can see both keyframes on the spline editor. If I play the animation, you'll notice that it zooms in quickly at the beginning and then gradually slows down. However, you want to make the animation start slowly, then gradually speed up. To achieve this, select the first keyframe to reveal the handlebar. Then grab the handlebar and drag it to the right. After adjusting the first keyframe, play the video to observe the text animation again. It may already seem improved, but we can refine it further. First, select the last keyframe and drag its handlebar downwards to the right. Now, play the animation again to see how it behaves after these adjustments. Great, this animation is perfect now. Next, let's give the text a 3D effect. However, if you want to achieve the text similar to Bantages, you might need to use different software like Photoshop. To start, select the text node, then simultaneously press the Shift key and space bar to bring up the tool selection pop-up window. Search the drop shadow node and once found, click add to include it. You instantly see it appear under the text node. Ensure the shadow node is selected then navigate to the inspector tab. Make adjustments to this node to give the text a 3D effect. You can increase the shadow strength and decrease the drop angle. Observe the text to see the changes. Then decrease the drop distance and adjust the blur according to your preferences. With these adjustments, you will notice that the text appears more like 3D text, although it's not exactly similar to Bantic's Titan. Let's play with the time indicator and preview how the zoom in transition works after applying the drop shadow effect. You can observe the drop shadow on the left side of the preview to adjust it, select the transform node 2 and navigate to the spectro tab. Now select the last keyframe by moving the time indicator or clicking on the arrow icon next to the size. Then increase the size value slightly to address this issue. Alternatively, you can adjust the center to fix it. Let's play with the time indicator again to observe its improvement. In this part, we need to add motion blur to the animation. Select the transform node 2, then simultaneously press the shift key and space bar to bring up the pop-up window of the node selection option. Search the blur node and apply it by hitting the add button. The blur node is now connected between transform node 2 and merge node 1. Next, select the blur node and place the time indicator at the center of the text animation. Click on this small icon of the blur node to add the fast keyframe. 
This keyframe's curve line can be identified by its color. After that, move the time indicator a few frames before the last keyframe of the transform node 2 and increase the blur value by sliding its slider. Then smooth the keyframes by selecting them and clicking on the smoothing icon. Next, hold on the shift key to vertically lock the keyframe and drag this keyframe to the right following the last keyframe of the transform node 2. Optionally, you can adjust the curve line if needed. At this stage of the tutorial, we need to draw a mask around the letter D. However, the actual masking will occur on the background video. To begin, ensure no node is selected by clicking on blank area. Then click on the polygon tool to add it. Ensure the time indicator is at the beginning part of the video. Now connect this polygon node to the media end node. You'll notice that the background disappears and becomes transparent. To fix this, go to the inspector tab and click on invert to reveal the video. Next, zoom in on preview by holding down the control key and scrolling the mouse wheel. Start drawing the marks around the letter D. To adjust the marks, hold down the control key and drag the bar. Move the time indicator to the right and readjust the mask as needed. Repeat this process for the rest of the masking. You can easily move the preview around by holding down the shift and control keys. Then grabbing the preview and move it around. After completing the marks, click the drop down arrow icon and set the frame size to fit. Now play the time indicator to observe that the masking is ok. You notice that there is transparency inside the marks. This is because the marks is inverted and solid is enabled in the inspector tab. Next move to the editing tab and drag this video to the video layer too. Then place the second video underneath the first video and play back the video. The video transition seems good but you may wanna hide the second video at the beginning of the zoom in transition. To change the settings for this, first confirm the time indicator's position on the video, then return to the fusion tab. Select polygon node on, then click on zoom to fit on the spline. Move the time indicator to the beginning portion of the timeline. Next, set a keyframe for the border width and decrease its value slightly. You see the transparent area inside the marks disappear. Now move the time indicator just before the center of the transition duration and adjust the border width value to 0, then increase the soft edge value slightly. If you now play the time indicator, you'll see how the transition looks after making these changes. It becomes normal to transparent as desired. As everything has been completed in Fusion tab, let's return to the editing tab. Now play the video and enjoy the most eye-catching title transition, similar to the title transitions of Bantike. If you think some things needs to be adjusted, simply do it in the Fusion tab. Thank you for watching this transition tutorial until now. If you found this tutorial interesting, you can also watch other fascinating tutorials on this channel. Hope to see you in the next video.